Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and in today's Kerbal Space Program video I'm going to be doing one of my favourite things to do and that is recreating ships that never were, or a ship, there's only one in this video and that is this, I've got two reference images for your eyes on screen it is the PKA space plane that was designed by the Soviet Union in response to the US Air Force dinosaur project which of course also never happened and perhaps would be a good idea for this series, I better just write this down but that's not for today, today we're going to be doing the PKA space plane I just stumbled upon this, I can't, I think I was just browsing astronautics.com or something and I just found an article and upon googling it there wasn't really much information about this space plane. All I could really find out was that it was made in response to the US Air Force dinosaur project and it would be inserted into a 300 kilometer altitude orbit by a Vostok launch vehicle and after 24 hours to 27 hours of flight the spacecraft would break from orbit and glide down to its landing zone where it would land on skis. Although skis are very hard to do in Kerbal Space Program so my replica has wheels. Sorry about that but hey it never existed, who knows, you know, Orion was going to have round solar panels, now it does not. Perhaps this would not have had skis in the final build, we don't know because it never existed. So this is basically as close to the real thing as humanity has ever got, this video right here. So I hope you enjoy it. And yes, as you can see, this is an orthinopter, which means it achieves flight by flapping its wings. Of course it doesn't, that would be stupid. Uh, but you can see that the wings can fold up like that, and that's because for the launch and space mission and initial part of the re-entry where we're receiving the brunt of the aerodynamic forces, those things are tucked away nice and safe to give us a better aerodynamic profile. And then when it comes to actually performing our glide, descent and landing, uh, we can unfold them and use them. Them like wings. I guess I could have just said unfold them and leave them at like that and you could have extrapolated from that what uh, what they would have been used for when they unfolded. Now I couldn't quite get the scale of the wings right using the actual in-game wing pieces so I've built them out of the big S elevons, the main uh, wings there so but I think I think it looks pretty passable as a wing piece at Elevon and and that's it that's the build done I've already got a Vostok launch vehicle which I built in my Vostok and Voskod speedrun video which nobody watched so you could go watch that now if you blooming well want to see how this was built should be a card on screen and description link if you want to watch the build of my Vostok rocket but now it's been built everything is assembled we can go ahead and launch and I'm launching from the dessert launch site because this I think is the closest in appearance to the Baikonur Cosmodrome which would be presumably where this would have launched from since it's a Vostok rocket and the Vostoks were launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome uh, and here we are launching from the dessert uh, launch site now full disclaimer guys when it came to landing this I totally forgot that I was meant to be flying it back to the air quotes Soviet Union so well, I'll, be la I'll be landing it at the Kerbal Space Center but maybe this is just a really we could just say this was oh look at that Korolev cross by the way this was the most convoluted round trip from the dessert launch site to the Kerbal Space Center that has ever been undertaken in this game and that that was really what I wanted to achieve in this mission uh, not just get this space plane to orbit because of course I thought it's all well and good recreating the basic shape like I feel like aesthetically it's pretty close like it's it was a very difficult shape to recreate but I think what I got is a pretty good approximation in terms of what's achievable in stock Kerbal Space Program and I think it's it worked out quite nicely actually having those service bays uh, sort of clipped into the fuel tanks because they act as a sort of nice shield piece for all the scientific instruments that lie behind those doors I guess it looks it looks really cool, like a sort of a custom cargo bay that's really shallow because it's only designed to carry very superficial things like science experiments and exposed matter experiments. I guess so science experiments, right? We'll talk about redundant sentences there. It does also contain batteries and solar panels, so those are other things that they are uh, that lie behind those fairing covers, not fairing covers, uh, cargo bay doors. And yes, I forgot how bad the thrust to weight ratio of my Vostok launch vehicle uh, is and was, I guess because it was designed to just launch a Vostok spacecraft and not this really heavy space plane. So yeah, it was a bit of a long old burn to get to orbit, but we made it in the end. Well, I say made it in the past tense, we're not quite there yet. We're about to make it though, and you might be noticing already actually that this thing really wants to buck upward. Uh, I didn't 
I didn't look at the center of mass and center of thrust when placing the engines, and these engines, I'm going to hazard a guess, are placed below the center of mass. So the center of thrust is going to push us up constantly. So, yeah, it was a bit of a battle getting this thing to fly straight, especially when performing long burns to get to Minmus, because, yes, I said that um, a boring old low carbon orbit mission, uh, we can do better. Let's go to Minmus, because I went to Mun last week, and I really like taking space planes to Minmus. I'm sorry, I know it's not a difficult mission to do, but I really like taking space planes to Minmus, because there's something so satisfying about launching them from the Great Platts. Great Platts, the Great Flats. English. It's a difficult language to master. <laughs> so yes, I've had to speed the footage up quite a bit here just to keep it at a tolerable length, but I'm sure you can see the ship kind of vibrates and oscillates as we perform the burn. It was just me basically fighting the tendency to nose upward using W and S on the keyboard. Uh, it, meant I was, it was a bit of a boring time, really. Normally, with these sorts of big, long burns, I just set the ship to automatically hold the maneuver node vector and then just time warp without any input required for myself. So I can just look at my phone, have a, have a biscuit, have a bit of a drink of water, I'm not endorsing anything. And um, I feel like I've talked about everything that I needed to talk about with this space. I was about to go on another tangent about, oh, we can talk about this, that, and the other. But you know what, guys? I think... I'm going to do something special for you, you know. You guys have seen me do Minmus space planes before. You know how this goes. You know, I feel like the footage is now going to do the rest of the talking that I need to be doing for this video because because you, it's a video. So, I thought we could do a very special whiskey review. And it's not just going to be a whiskey review of me talking like this. Well, I, I'm obviously going to be talking, but I thought I can set a, I can set some time aside and do a live first taste of a whiskey I've never had, and you can hear my live reaction to it. And I've already done this. It's not going to be live, like, because it's a pre-recorded video, right? So I'm going to finish talking now and hand you over to Past Matt. Thank you, Past Matt, and hello, all of you here. We're on the, on the mini cam that you can now see. Welcome back to our first in situ whiskey review. I've never had this before. I saw it in the, the local off license. I thought, you know what? I ought to try this. I do like a good Jack Daniels, and I've never seen the old Tennessee apple juice, as it were. So I thought it might maybe be interesting for me to do a whiskey review live for you guys, you know, at the same time that I'm experiencing it for the first time. So let's just, uh, I haven't planned this very well because I can't, I can't find the bit that you tear. Uh, hang on. Uh, um, you can tell I've done this loads of times before, right? Uh, yes, there we go, there we go. I feel like you can't even see what I'm doing. That's not very good, is it? There we are, it's done. The, the peel is off. By the way, you can buy this whiskey for twenty one ninety nine at your local Premier Off license, if you so happen to live near such an establishment. And now let us get to the actual review. So, I have my Jack Daniels Old Number no. Seven glass. I am now opening the whiskey. I'm just going to pour in a small amount. Lovely. Now, my initial impression so far is I can, I can, I can smell the apple. I can definitely smell the apple in the air. Uh, now, what they all recommend, as in what the YouTube reviews or like YouTube guides to whiskey tasting I've seen recommend, you've got to add a little bit of water. So we're going to take a pipette, just a, just a dash, all you need, and we'll just let that um, diffuse. Just so you want to like dilute it down to sort of 35% is the optimum is the optimum dilution, I guess. A concentration. Right. And here we go. Bottoms up, everyone. Ah. I, I hold it in my mouth for a second just to let the taste really, you know, uh, conglomerate in my taste buds. And then I swallow. And it's definitely, it's definitely sweet. If you've ever had the uh, Jack Daniels toffee, it's definitely akin to that as opposed to your standard glass of Jack Daniels, which admittedly 
is uh, often the case with flavoured whiskies, but just thought it's worth mentioning. So definitely the sweetness is uh, the first thing I'm feeling. But uh, after that, it's, it's very smooth, you know, it's not, it doesn't have the burn, it doesn't have a very strong burn. By the way, I have just realised looking at the bottle that I gave some advice that you're going to dilute it down to 35%. Um, and I guess I wasn't wrong, but I now see if the camera will focus that it's already 35%. I don't even know if you guys would be able to see this. I'm assuming I'm going to put this as like a mini cam on the bottom left or bottom right of the screen or wherever. So, um, oh, we'll let that stay blurry for a bit whilst the camera panics and refocuses. Uh, yeah, so it looks like it was always 35%, so I needn't have dilated it. And I've di diluted it, and I've probably just uh, compromised the whole experience in a way. So, apologies for that. Um... But yeah, I, I I don't know. In terms of the, I think I do, I think I do prefer Jack Daniel's toffee. There's only a tiny bit left. Let's just have another little taste. I'm gonna quickly sniff it first. Mm -mm -mm. So I can I can I can smell the apple more than I can taste the apple. Let me just. <sighs> yes, I can definitely taste the apple on that a bit more on that second one. And then the first time I was just so excited about doing a live whiskey review that I that I kind of missed the mark a little bit. But no, it's definitely it's definitely got the apple taste. It obviously doesn't taste like apple juice. It's a very it's a very high strength drink, right? It's forty five it's thirty five percent, sorry. So it's not gonna be like an ale where there's like an actual distinctive flavour. Most of it is just gonna be alcohol. But it's it's got a very sweet taste, I guess, to sort of counteract the bitterness that comes with whiskey. Uh, and then some sort of help, I guess. Do they make it sweet? I, don't, I like how this is going to be a review, but now I'm asking you, the viewer, questions about whiskey. Is it because whiskey has, such, has got such a bitter taste that they add loads of sweeteners when they're making a flavoured whiskey, so that the sweetener kind of offsets the bitterness of the alcohol, and then that makes any flavours present more palatable, or not palatable, but you know, more easy to distinguish? I don't know. Interesting thought, and I've never really... I've only just put this together right now on the spot. Um... This is obviously not a very well script. This isn't scripted. <laughs> um, but yes, if, if I had to give Jack Daniel's original recipe, Tennessee apple, finely crafted apple liqueur from the makers of Jack Daniel's Tennessee whiskey, I would give this... Uh, oof. I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. It, it, it's decent. I, just, I feel like I've not done a scored whiskey review in so long. I don't remember what, my, what, what, what I gave everything else. So this might be really, really off. <laughs> off mark compared to what I've given whiskies in the past, but my heart says, you know, it's, it's, I'm probably not going to get this again. Like, it was nice. Every, every whiskey except Southern Comfort is at least a five, really, because it's an above average drink and five is like the average, but this isn't quite whiskey. This is flavoured, so this gets the average mark. Um, it'll do me well, I'm sure, but, uh, yeah, 5 out of 10. Bit bit too sweet, really. I accept that is just what happens when you have a flavoured whiskey, or at least a flavoured whiskey in the $21.99 price bracket. There it is again. But, um, but yeah, I, I think it's just a bit too sweet for me. I'm a bit more of a stickler over the bitter. The, I guess the ones... I guess I just like whiskey that tastes like whiskey, you know? That's why I'm not really a big fan of the flavoured ones. Did I do the... To I've ever... I've ever <laughs> have I ever reviewed Toffee Jack Daniels? I'm not sure if I have, but if I had to rate that one, I'd probably give that one a five and a half, six. I'd give it a six, actually. I'd give it a six. I'd also probably give the Jack Daniels... Oh, let's, go with all, let's do a review of all three flavoured Jack Daniels. The Apple one gets a five. The Fireball probably gets a five and a half, and the Toffee gets a six, but it's close to a 5.75. There we go. That's my score, and that is my end, the end of my whiskey review. So I'm going to pass you back over to... um. To, to present day Matt that you're currently watching do an incredible Kerbal Space Program video on that's definitely going to get millions and millions of views and I'm going to have the I'm going to have the rest of this the rest of this the rest of this bottle actually before I go I might just have one little taste of it without the water It's a 4 out of 10. It's a 4 out of 10, guys. It's too sweet. It is a bit sickly. I'm not actually a big fan of this. Um, th thank you and goodbye. <laughs>